So in this lesson, we're going to apply Gauss's law on various different scenarios. This is special symmetries. So before we begin, we need to remember the flux is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. This is Gauss's law from the previous situation. You will be given a sheet and a random distance from the sheet. You will be asked to find the electric field for this. Okay. We know that Gauss's law needs a symmetrical closed volume to work, like we did in the previous lesson. It has to be enclosed, and symmetrical will be easier to calculate with. So we can use a cylinder. We'll draw a cylinder, and we'll enclose whatever the area is that we're looking for, and it will be in front and behind of the sheet. Okay. So we have done that, and we have a full cylinder. We can start solving. Another reminder for you from the previous video was the charge density is Q over area, because this is a sheet of paper, so it will be Q over A. Okay, so the first thing is we'll start with the flux formula, the Gauss's law part, which is Q over epsilon naught equals EA, starting from here. And then after that, we'll realize that, hold on, we have a flux going through this side, and it's going through that side. We have two areas, this side and this side, so you have two fluxes. Of course, it's not going to be coming out of these sides, um, you know, the outside of the cylinder, because that will become perpendicular to the field facing the wrong way. It has to be going in this direction, okay, positive and negative. For that reason, we have two EAs, so EA here, EA here. So I'm taking this part of the formula. So out of here, I'm focusing in on this part of the formula now. So I have this EA, and I have the back EA. So 2EA is the same as the flux. So 2EA will be also the same as Q over epsilon naught because I've got two of these will become that. Two of these will become that. Bringing that in, if you remember from before, density is Q over A. So I will rearrange that to get Q. Q is density times area. Substitute this inside of Q. So that becomes... 2EA equals density times A over epsilon naught. We can cancel these A's out. Very nice. And that gives us with the final formula, which is E equals density over 2 epsilon naught for one sheet. If I have two sheets, very easy. All you do is add them. So this is 1 half plus a half, because it's like an imaginary one here, yeah? A half plus a half is one full. So if you do that, you will just get density over epsilon naught. Done. That is for two parallel infinite planes. Okay, outside the fields will cancel. Out here, we have a field line going this way. This is a negative plane, right? So that means we'll have a field line going in. So that means outside, this will cancel each other out. So you don't need to worry about that. You just need to worry about any point in between. We also have a linearly charged wire. So just a straight wire, and you'll use the same thing. You will take your cylinder and you will cover it, you'll enclose it with a cylinder. Now in this case, the electric field is coming out this way from a wire, in all directions like this, radially, right? So that means this area is not going to have any field through it. This area is not going to have any field going through it, the flux even. It's going out. Okay, so we will use the density is Q over epsilon naught. Bring in the EA equals Q epsilon naught, which is the full part of the formula that we're going to use, and we can start substituting. We can substitute the area of a cylinder, if you remember the area of a cylinder, and the density rule to help you swap out the Q enclosed. So we know the area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h. In this case, we will call it 2 pi r l, because this is the length of the wire. It's the same thing as the height of this cylinder, l. And then if you wanted to know the Q of a line, if you remember, it's density multiplied by the line itself. So we can do some cancelling and rearranging. Uh, we can cancel the L, and then we can take this 2 pi r, and I can bring it to the other side, and it'll become divide. So that leaves us with this. We can make this look a little bit easier and neater if we realize that K is 1 over 4. So if I double a quarter... So a quarter plus a quarter it becomes a half. So 2k will become 1 over 2 pi epsilon naught. That's interesting because there's, remember, imaginary one sitting over here, 1 over 2 pi epsilon naught. So we can substitute that instead with a k, not k, 2k, because it's 1 over 2 pi. 
Put that in and you leave with this formula here. So this is how you find a linearly charged wire. You can use this to solve any question to find the electric field around a wire. You just really need to know the density and how far away you are. Those are the two factors that will affect the electric field. Okay, and the main part of the lesson was the charged spheres. We have four different scenarios. We have a hollow, thin shell, which is a conducting and an insulating sphere. We can have a solid conducting sphere, like a metal ball. And we can have a solid insulating sphere, could be like a rubber ball, for example. All of these will be pretty much the same, okay? Um, ap apart from the insulating one, the solid insulating. Reason being is if you take this hollow sphere, no matter what it is, the charges don't really have a choice. They're stuck on the outside. They don't have a choice. They have to be. Same if I was to take an insulating sphere made out of rubber. It doesn't matter because they are, again, stuck on the outside. There are no charges, not him. There are no charges inside. The field lines, if they're positive, you will have a field line coming that way, maybe one coming that way, they will cancel. That way, coming that way, they will cancel. So they will all cancel with each other. That means E inside will be zero. Nice. And this is also true for the solid sphere. If I was to have a solid sphere, and this is like a, a sphere like this, and this is a conducting one, so if I place some charges here and here, they will repel to the edges. They will go all the way to the edges. And that means you will have only charges around the edges. E inside will become zero again. The only time is not zero inside is in the insulating case. Because what happens now is if I have a insulating sphere and I place a couple of charges or three or four charges inside, they are stuck. They cannot move. These charges cannot move. So if I take any volume, if I enclose any volume, I have charges inside it. If I take a bigger volume, I will have more charges inside it. So the formula is different. E is not zero inside. E is not zero. So you will have to figure that out. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, to summarize, in a conductor, charge is spread evenly around the surface. There's an electric field outside, as normal, and it will follow Coulomb's law. So you use KQ over R squared. The charge inside will be zero, so the E inside will be zero. Insulator, charges are stuck inside. There is a field outside, and it follows Coulomb's law, as normal, because if you have a sphere and you have some charges inside, and you are way over here, this is your distance, your R. It could be any distance at all. That's why we use R, because it's like a radius. And the rule can simply be E equals K Q over R squared, as we know. Inside, there is a charge, so there is an E. Okay, and the directly proportional inside, the, the R is directly proportional to the, the charge in the E. We'll figure that out right now. Okay, the two scenarios. Charges with a radius outside the sphere, or charges with a radius inside the sphere for a solid insulating. This is the only one where we have to derive all the formulas for. So let's do it. I'm going to say A is the radius of the sphere. So if I take A uh, from here to here, I'll call this A. And then what I will say then after that, I will say the R will be the radius that I am looking for, the radius that I need. It could be that or it could be something like here. Uh, inside the sphere. So that's the difference between A and R, okay? So let's go on. First one, when R is bigger than A. So if my radius is all the way out here, for example, let's say here, this is my R. Remember, A is only up to here. This is my A. So we'll use EA equals Q over epsilon naught. We'll take that rule here. We know that EA, it's okay, so A is the area of this, 4 pi R squared. I'll take E multiplied by 4 pi r squared equals Q over epsilon naught. Rearrange, take the 4 pi r squared over to the other side and divide. And hold on a second, this looks very familiar. This is clearly Coulomb's law. Same thing. This is K and this Q over r squared. So outside we have proved this is simply Coulomb's law. Inside, it is a little different. Looking at this. What is the difference? Outside, we've already agreed, as you get further away, you're getting away from the charges, your field will decrease. But if you're inside the sphere, you have charges, you're picking up some charges, for example, this much, 
If you go further out, you will pick up more charges. So you're catching more charges, there will be more. So let's derive the equation inside. We need to know the enclosed volume, the volume that we're taking up. We'll need to know the total volume that is possible. And we'll do a little ratio. We'll divide the two to find the ratio. So if I want to know how much charge I am enclosing, I should know the total charge that is possible multiplied by the volume that I am taking over the total volume possible. If I do that, I can simply um, cancel some things out. We can cancel the 4 over 3 in the pi. So that takes us to this rule. This is going to help us figure out the next part of the formula. We'll use it in the big formula. Okay. Ea, Q over epsilon naught. So we know E, that's, that's just the electric field. A is the area, 4 pi r squared. And Q over epsilon naught, I'll replace Q with what we just did, which is QT r cubed over A cubed. And at the bottom, we'll keep the epsilon naught. Cancel out some of the r's. r squared with the r cubed, leaving only an r. So we can rearrange. We'll take these two over to the other side, and that will give me this little formula there. And shuffle it around, and you will see that this becomes k again. And now we have qr over a cubed. That is the formula for inside the sphere. Another way to, um, to derive it, we can use density as well. We know the density is Q over V, um, so we can do Q over 4 pi uh, A cubed, because this is 4 pi R cubed. This is how you find the density of uh, the volume of a sphere. So then for the enclosed charge, Q equals density times volume. We know that. So the Q, in Q enclosed will become Q total over 4 pi A cubed, which is this one over here, multiplied that by the volume, which we know is 4 pi R cubed, the, the volume that we're enclosing. Remember, enclosed is R, and the total possible is A. Calculating, we can just remove some of these things, cancel them out, and you end up with exactly the same thing. You have Q over A cubed times R cubed, exactly like we did before, and then you can substitute that back into the formula that we just did, the formula right here. So we end up using the same way to get that. Okay. So if you were to make a little graph of it, follows Coulomb's law outside, but inside it is directly proportional, so you will end up with a graph that looks like this. It goes up directly. As soon as you leave the sphere, it will start to go down. Here is a list of all the formulas that you need for your uh, exam, and we have went over this in class, so this should be easy for you, hopefully.